Iru has had a grueling session at the Teochew Drama Association, but she is undeterred. She visits Jeffrey A, the owner of Eng Tianghuat Chinese Cultural Shop, to understand the intricacies behind Teochew opera. Jeffrey's father and grandfather used to make Teochew opera costumes until the 1980s, when the opera became less popular. Jeffrey now imports his costumes from China. Not so exactly the same because Teochew and Godori somehow rather is um, they are more wear and tear. Why I say wear and tear is that, like for instance, this is a costume. So, uh, you can put it on, you, you, you can hang it, and it's, it's, it's unlike some other provinces, they have those very delicate uh, embroidery whereby you only can hang on the wall as a decoration piece. Uh, yes, uh, Teochew uh, music uh, is somehow very different from any other dialects. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, but firstly, you have to understand in, in opera there is the uh, percussion sections and then there is always the wind or string section. Uh, let me show you uh, some of the uh, string section history, mm -hmm. which is a very typical uh, Teochew musical instrument. Mm -hmm. A lead soprano by it. Uh, as you can see, is is uh, the box here, the musical box here is very small, uh, made of snake skin, and the sound screen uh, rather very high pitch, uh, just like uh, the lead singer voice. Okay, uh, a very typical Teochew instrument, and uh, seldom other dialects will use such an uh, instrument. Now it's time for more training. It's been a week since Iru last saw her opera teacher, and she seems rather unsettled. <laughs> 